All right. Earlier today, as I mentioned, the CDC revising their guidance, saying that now even vaccinated people should be wearing masks indoors. Now, this follows on the heels of the Justice Department uh, Office of Legal Counsel posting an opinion yesterday stating the federal law doesn't prohibit public agencies and private businesses from requiring COVID vaccines. And on the heels of that, the Veterans Administration now requiring vaccinations for its employees. And even earlier today, President Biden suggesting a mandate could be in the works. Here to talk more about this is U.S. Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas. He serves as a member of the Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pension. Uh, Senator Marshall is also a medical doctor who practiced medicine for over 25 years. Senator Marshall, welcome back to the program. Tony, it's good to hear you. It's been too long. Look forward to the conversation. Well, let's start uh, first with the issue of mask. Uh, you have been, I mean, you, you say, look, me measure the health risk, get the vaccine. Once you have the vaccine, you don't need the mask. That's not what the CDC said today. <laughs> Tony, it just never ceases to amaze me. I, I just wish some, there was a little bit more common sense here at the CDC. Look, if you've had the vaccine or if you've had the virus, uh, there's a 95% uh, protection from this new Delta variant or really the virus itself as well. So I really think that, that you're in good shape if you've had the vaccine if you, or if you've had the virus itself. This type of ruling from the CDC is just gonna create more vaccine hesitancy. It's gonna backfire on the CDC. Uh, I, I just think we need to look at the big picture here. Two thirds of adults within the next couple of weeks will have had the vaccination and 90% uh, of our senior citizens will have had the vaccine here in a couple of weeks. And those who haven't, at least half of them have already had the virus. We have to be getting close to herd immunity. I think once again, the CDC overreacting, they're smarter than you are. And that's what really scares me when I listen to your quote from Jen Psaki. She's smarter than you are. She knows what's best for you. She knows what's your family. This whole pattern of socialism just coming to the forefront here over this darn mask issue. Now, Dr. Marshall, let me ask you this question, because you brought this up. I've talked about this on this program, but you don't hear the CDC talking about it. You don't hear the White House talking about it. But natural immunity occurs when you've had the virus. In fact, I've had uh, medical experts on this program say it's just as good, if not better, than the vaccine. You know, I exactly. Who ever heard of their doctor, you know, your kids had the chicken pox, did they say, oh, now you need to go get the vaccine after you've had it? Uh, or you, know, you, have, you have, you've had hepatitis and now you need to go get the vaccine? You know, that just doesn't make sense. And I think, again, this is one more reason we have vaccine hesitancy from folks, because when we hear a, a common sense not coming from the CDC, something that's contraindicatory contra to what we've ha heard in the past, uh, it just confuses us and it scares us. It feels like they're not being honest honest with this. But I really do think that immune, uh, that you have great immunity, maybe even better long lasting immunity from natural uh, exposure to the virus. But time will tell. This has been politicized when you you see the discussion about the mask. And, and, and in fact, I'm going to play a clip from uh, Governor Newsom out in California taking issue with conservatives. Uh, play clip number five, please. But we are exhausted, respectfully, exhausted by the ideological prism that too many Americans are living under. We're exhausted by the Ron Johnsons and the Tucker Carlsons. We're exhausted by the Margie Taylor Greens. We're exhausted by the right-wing echo chamber that has been perpetuating misinformation around the vaccine and its efficacy and safety. We're exhausted by the politicalization of this pandemic, and that includes mask wearing. Uh, I would say I'm exhausted, too, of the liberals who are trying to make every decision for adults in America and make decisions for their children. I think we put the facts out there, let people talk to their doctors, which you have suggested, and then make the choice that's best for them. You know, absolutely, Tony. I, I think a person that's not had the vaccine yet, I would encourage them to go talk to their doctor. But what I'm really sensitive to right now is children. Um, you know, I asked this question of the CDC director, as well as the FDA director here this last week. I asked them, how many children have died from COVID who did not have an underlying health condition? And what's frightening is neither one of them knew the answer to that question. I think the answer is zero. 
certainly we do know that there are some potential side effects from this vaccine. Uh, so I, I think I think the parents need to hear the whole story. They need to hear it presented to them objectively. But the CDC doesn't want to talk about the potential complications. And, you know, all that being said, if I had a child with a serious underlying health condition, um, you know, to be frank, I'd probably think about getting that child vaccinated. But the other ones under 21, I don't think it's clear cut. And certainly the parents deserve to have that discussion with, the, with their doctor and have all the facts on the table as well. I really do think that's what America medicine is based upon is that the sacredness of the doctor patient relationship and being able to have a frank discussion about it. Well, we're talking about the mask mandate that has come back, and that uh, that applies to schools. The CDC is now saying that whether you're vaccinated or not, schools, you should be, kids should be wearing these masks. I certainly hope that this uh, accelerates the the exit, uh, the exodus from uh, our government schools, and which would be a great thing if our kids get outside the public schools and start uh, stop being indoctrinated by the left, but. Right on the heels of this, we just saw, as I mentioned at the top of the program, the DOJ issuing guidance saying the, that you can mandate, even though this is under emergency guidance, you can still mandate this vaccine. And uh, we saw the Department of Veteran Affairs announced yesterday that it will require doctors, nurses, and other health care personnel at the Veterans Health Administration to get vaccinated. And on the heels of that, we see other government entities. Are you concerned that we could be looking at a mandated vaccine for Americans? We're going to have to fight like the dick is to keep that from happening. And, and here's just you know one more piece of the puzzle. Probably 40 or 50 percent of our kids have already had the virus, but they don't get any credit to that natural immunity. So if 40 percent of the children have already had the virus, and there's nothing going on in that particular community that there's no uptick in the virus. Why do you need to wear masks? I trust local school board members to make that decision. And even in a state like Kansas, what's happening in, a, in Kansas City may be really different than what's happening on the other side of the state. Um, so I, I think there's, this is just another uh, method of control that frustrates me. And we're, we're going to have to fight back. And we look forward to, to your listeners helping us join that fight, protecting our God-given constitutional rights. Yeah, again, I, I've said many, many times in this program, I'm not against the vaccine. I have natural immunity. I had the virus last year. And I think you need to weigh the health risk that you have, weigh them for your children, and you make the decisions. But I am absolutely, totally, 100 percent against the government mandating it or strong-arming people to take it. I think this is a, a precursor to other freedoms that we could lose if we allow the government to mandate a, a vaccine. And even, I'm, I tell you, I'm with you on the mask. Um, I, I, I think this is, this is conditioning for our society, for the government to control what we do, especially, as you've said, Dr. Marshall, follow the science, and the science is not here. Yeah, you, you got it, Tony. Um, I, I, just, I just don't know what to say. I, like, I, I would encourage people to talk to their doctor um, about the vaccine or not. I've never been convinced that the masks do any good, especially in the real world. What we do know is the mask can cause psychological damage, certainly for our children, but, but unfortunately my dad's been in and out of the hospital for the past six months and having all those nurses in masks and just not seeing people smile, it's not normal. Uh, there's a huge psychological toll from the mask, from the isolation, uh, and I'm not sure that there's a benefit there to, to justify it again, especially if you've had the virus or if you've had the vaccine already. So um, please, please, CDC, start using some common sense. Trust, trust local doctors, trust, lo trust local uh, school board members will make the right decisions. So, uh, Dr. Marshall, what can Americans do to push back on this overreaching arm of the government? Because, you know, part of this is being the media is, is stoking the fear. And, of course, when you're filled with fear, you're easily led. And, and, and so you've got the media working in concert with the administration to, to control Americans and taking them places, quite frankly, they don't need to go nor they want to go. Well, Tony, you know, fortunately, you're a great voice here in Washington, uh, and I'd like to think that I am as well. I think that they, your listeners need to be reaching out to you and reaching out uh, to, to the voices that would be strong on this particular issue. And I think you know who, who those would be as well. Just keep putting that air beneath our wings 
and um, and just this whole battle over our civil liberties. It's all the same theme to me. You know, they're attacking our freedom of speech and our freedom of religion. Of course, the sanctity of life and the Second Amendment, 24-7, those are under assault as well. So I, I think just, just please, uh, your listeners, keep reaching out, keep supporting us and, and, and praying for us as well. Eventually, this is a battle for the soul of this nation. You're absolutely right. And we appreciate you being on the front lines, fighting it. Uh, Senator uh, Roger Marshall of Kansas, great to talk to you again. Thanks, Tony.